guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We've had an interesting week with the tail end of Hurricane Hillary. I mean, first of all, receiving any hurricane related weather in yeah. our area is in incredibly weird. Has that ever happened? Can you ever think of a time no, where, we that, had any... where it was connected to right. a hurricane? No. Uh, but the other really cool thing about it, for us anyway, is that we received a ton of rain, like a ton, like flooding rain, uh, with no wind. That never happens. Yeah. Usually we get, and we didn't know. So like I was out thinning fruit trees because I thought the weight of the fruit with all that water on it, plus the huge wind that we're probably in for, I'm going to have trees breaking in half. And that's usually what happens. Good thing but you did that. I know. Because even though we didn't get the wind, we got a ton, ton of rain. And mm -hmm. I think that nectarine would have just, yeah, it would have been toast. I mowed it today, this morning. Yeah. Was and it, it was nice? so nice going underneath it. I didn't Were you have just all thinking, I'm going to go do something nice for her for all of the trimming she did in here. <laughs> <laughs> Made my job a lot easier. <laughs> Anyway, it's been a really nice week. Uh, before we jump into the videos, we did want to let you know that we have started selling our merch ourselves instead mm -hmm. of going through Teespring. Uh, the offering, I mean, we just barely started, so our offering is very limited at the moment. Um, but Shirts and hoodies. Shirts and hoodies right now. But we're going to add more. We're going to put yeah. another order here for other stuff like hats. And yeah, so we're actually just like stocking our own stuff, and we've got other things in the works that's really that are really exciting. Um, I'm really excited to share with you guys. But anyway, we're offering 20% off our merch shirts and hoodies <laughs> right now. Um, there are some things already out of stock. I mentioned that we have our own shop a couple weeks ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a few sizes that are not available, but they will be soon. But anyway, 20% off, to, no code, right? It's just gonna like auto. Oh yeah, you know what, let's do that. So it'll just be, how about um, like 48 hours from Four. when this video goes up? So 48 so hours. you don't so. need to do a code, it'll just automatically be 20% off and then For 48 that hours. way you don't have to mess with it. Okay. Yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, let's jump into the videos from this last week. First one was still planting in 100 plus degree heat. Beautiful purple blooming plants. I love it when I have, I mean, you guys know I've got kind of a plant hoard sitting there, uh, which we have to have with the nature of what we do means that I just need to keep on like working on things and adding things. So I usually have some things sitting out by the high tunnel or the greenhouse. And when, when certain things are all kind of like blooming or looking good at the same time, that's always fun to just kind of gather up a group of things and just show you like these are all beautiful purple things, you yeah. know? I love doing that. So we had um, Salvia, Indiglo Girl. We had uh, Asian Moon Budlea. There was a Campanula, the Arctic Arctic Falls. Was there another one? Was that I don't it? Know. Did I just have the three? Maybe I just had the three. Anyway, Sarah said, do you harvest your elderberries? We do not. So we have the Instant Karma elderberry, which I pruned on a little bit because I planted the Campanula right below it. And they do have huge clusters of berries. And I don't know, like medicinally, those are ornamental el elderberries. And um, they're, like, the birds love them. I don't know if the... What was it like the the compounds in them are the same mm -hmm. or whatever the makeup of the berries are the same as like the true fruit producing elderberries like nova and york are the only two varieties i'm really familiar with uh but i do know that elderberry flowers like in europe they um deep fry them in the spring when they come out they take the flower clusters and they batter them deep mm -hmm. fry them and put powdered sugar on them huh so like but, a like a dessert yeah like right almost, yeah huh so I thought well, maybe one of these days we'll give that a shot. But I don't know much about the elderberries in, in the way of ornamental versus... The ones we have are edible? Well, they're ornamental elderberries, but I don't, I don't know that they're... They're not poisonous or anything, but yeah. I don't know if they are the same oh. as like a true fruit producing elderberry. That seems like... I can't, I can't articulate my thoughts about that <laughs> <laughs> properly. I, I know what you mean, though. You, okay, I know what you're hopefully saying. you guys know what I mean. Anyway... Ooh, that's an, any, any, any indication of how the rest of this video is gonna go. Oh my goodness. So Going Green Mom said, wait, so snowball bushes aren't hydrangeas? They are not. Snowball bushes are a type of viburnum. Now mine, like I showed you in this video, they were, they're throwing blooms right now, just a few sporadic ones, which that's not normal. Mm -hmm. They bloom earlier in the season than any hydrangeas do. So usually it's late spring, early summer, and then by the time they're done blooming, the hydrangeas start in. Um, and I, there's different types of snowball bush viburnums, but like these are the standard and they get big, like 10, 10 to 12 by 10 to 12 or so. There's like tree, tree, uh, like a small tree, bush, right? Yeah. Well, just or you train, can train, him, that train way. him that way. I think there are some dwarf or more compact varieties now out there. Well, and then 
there's a lot of different viburnums out there, but I remember thinking that they were the same thing because they're kind of like similar to a, like an Incredible. Hydrangea. The bloom structures are similar. A little smaller. But I mean, Incredible blooms are like face yeah. size, and Snowball Bush, you know, they're clusters of blooms, and like the hydrangea dishes like kind of have kind of a vase, you know, and then all of the blooms are it's just a different growth structure. Yeah. The Snowball Bush viburnums get more of a woody kind of mm. structure to them. Does sure. that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nancy said, Laura, I'm curious, did you get your degree in horticulture in college? You just amazed me with all your knowledge. I did not. Um, you got it in the school of hard knocks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I grew up in it and I'm still learning and there's so much, there's so much I don't retain too. Like I learn it and then somebody will ask me the question and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, for some reason, it's like fungal, fungal diseases in plants mm -hmm. because we don't deal with a lot of it. We had two cases. I was working down at um, Andrews yesterday and um, two different people brought in two different types of leaves with fungal things, things that I know are viral, viral mm -hmm. or fungal really. Um, and we determined that they were both different viral things that were going on. One was a maple and one was a burning bush, but it took me a minute because when I was down at Andrews, down at the garden center working every single day, and we were you know, faced with these problems every single day that people were bringing in, we were trying to help troubleshoot and so on. Um, it was always fresh in my mind, but sure. you know, when you're not dealing with it for 10 years or whatever, you know, I just kind of like, yeah. there's a lot more things to retain. I think that you are very knowledgeable about a pretty wide variety of plants. Well, I mean, what's available in our area, what, like what we can mm -hmm. grow. There's a lot of things, yeah. like tropical stuff you probably no. mm -mm. are not familiar with, but I think that you're really knowledgeable about a wide variety of plants and how they grow and you don't care at all why they do what they do. You you know how things work, but when it comes down to like the scientific reason of you know why uh, things react a certain way to a certain fertilizer, you're yeah. like, all or, I know is you give them this fertilizer and it does it like this is the result, you know. It's been oh, kind of wild for me because making videos about plants and like trying to think of how you prune things specifically, I'm like, you just prune it. You just yeah, look right. at it and decide. I want to take this all the way down, my risks and blooms, or I'm just going to lightly prune it. I don't know. I don't really think about it. I just can stand there and kind of make a decision and go for it. Well, it's interesting because some people go into like really in-depth uh, explanations of, you know, why like trees do a certain thing. He was like, okay, so this branch right here, if I were to prune it right here, it's going to secrete like a hormone to tell the tree to grow out. But if I prune it right here, it's going to secrete a hormone to tell the tree to grow up. And so, but he goes into like yeah. the, you know, the details of like, this is, you know, what it does. And he mm -hmm. names everything. And I was like, wow, that's like, I, you kind of know that, like, generally speaking, that if you like top a tree, mm -hmm. it's going to grow out. Yeah. And if you trim it on the sides, it's going to grow I up. I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that. The but you don't know like the names of the hormones that, oh, no. you know, are telling uh -uh. the tree to do that no. thing. No. Uh -uh. And I really don't. It kind of eh. doesn't matter. No. You know, but. It is, it is interesting to hear that information, mm -hmm. I guess. Like, I like hearing it. I don't retain it very well. I just know that it, ex it exists. <laughs> um, Abhishek. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. What was the flower at 638? Is it a rose? No, that is a sunset coral phlox. I think it was a, maybe a new phlox this year or last year. I like phlox. Phlox are nice. I just well, ordered I like the some more phlox. Ones. Yes. The, um, the ones that grow... Right? I think you would like the ground cover ones really? too, because even though um, they are short lived in their bloom season, they're spectacular. Yeah. I think you would really like that early in the spring. And then they just kind of like go away and they're good weed suppressant and that sort of thing. I go away in terms of blooms. Sure. Um, but they are pretty. Do you have to prune them or um, deadhead them? I probably would clean them up a little bit. Just yeah. kind of shear back that bloom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. We should plant some more then. Some more. Some at all. Oh. I don't have any plants at all. I did plant some behind the gazebo, and I don't think they thrived. Because yeah. I, I don't know. I think it was our fault. What kind of what kind of flocks was it? It was one that Proven Winners has. Um, and I can't remember the actual name. Uh, Violet, maybe something. Hmm. I could look it up if you should care to know. Do you care to know? I care. Okay. Well, then I'll let you know. Another one that seems to have sort of like a short bloom time is um what's that called dianthus dianthus i don't like dianthus really uh purple sprite flocks okay dianthus is awesome for like a 
little tiny bit and then it looks so bad it looks so bad and you feel like you need to go in and deadhead it but there's a ton of buds still left like on less the... than a week it seems yeah. like it blooms and then there's still bloom like buds on the stalks that are already have spent blooms and to go through and deadhead would be so tedious is that just our area do other people like have the blooms for longer I don't like know. do we heat up too quickly or I've, something i don't know i've tried them several times and they just are not worth it to me yeah i'm not a huge fan um because i remember that i remember seeing the dianthus and being like man that's a show because yeah. you know it's it's really vibrant right and then like a couple days later you're like oh that's Ooh, looks that, dead. Looks, that looks bad yeah. yeah i don't like plants that scream at you like that oh. like i like plants like echinacea and um things like that that can have spent blooms on them and still with fresh and, and fresh blooms but still look okay sure um salvia a lot of salvias are the same way now and yeah, they still retain some color like in their calyx or whatever, or they've got an interesting spent bloom like seed head. Uh, I like those. Cause... Well, I thought it was interesting in one of the tours, you were talking about those um, yellow like balls, that whatever those are. Crispedia? Uh, Crispedia by mm -hmm. the kitchen door. Oh, by the kitchen door. Yeah. Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum? Yes. And how when they start to brown, they still kind of retain a little bit of that yellow yeah. color. And so you almost can't tell the difference between... The fresh ones and the well, not at a glance, ones. not at a glance. Yeah, only for when sure. you're really close up. But that's kind of nice to have things like that in your right. garden, where it's like you almost can't tell the difference, and it just it's like a optical illusion where the the yellow ones make the other ones look like they're also yellow. Right. It's the white swan marigold, and I started those from seed thinking they were going to be white, and I'm actually thankful that they're not because they're like a soft butter yellow. Because if we had white marigolds and then spent blooms of marigolds, then you would yeah. have a, a huge contrast between the dead blooms and the white, fresh white blooms. So I'm thankful that they are pale yellow because it would be incredibly hard to get into that flower bed and deadhead those. Yeah. I mean, that, that flower bit's thick. I tried to give, uh, well, I did. I had to climb in on the backside, but I gave a ton of iron to that tree that's mm -hmm. kind of not doing well. Mm -hmm. I put over a half a bag on it, which is like way more than you need. Well, you do whatever you can to save that yeah. tree. Oh, you guys, my parents are in the middle of a renovation of their house, um, which we've shown you their garden a few times, but their back deck area. It's like I have so many memories on that deck area. I mean, it's going to be great because they're adding some square footage to the inside of their house, which they desperately need, especially when we're all together. Um, they had to remove the huge locust tree that's like in their the entryway. Like the biggest tree on the their biggest property. Tree. And it was one of the... So in their garden, um, there's a maple, that locust. And I'm trying to think if there's any other originals in that space. I don't think anything else that's there... So the maple that's on the other side of the deck, that's beautiful yellow in the fall, and then that locust were there when we moved in, and that's it. And that locust is gone because it was already heaving their foundation, uh, and the guys were looking at it like, we can't properly build stem walls with this, and it's just going to keep on, you know, anyway. So they had to make that tough decision to remove it, and... <sighs> It's, it's going to be pretty, though. It's going to be pretty in the end. I know I, my mom's in that situation right now where she's like, okay, just got to like blinders and just wait till it's done. I know how that is. You have to like positive talk to yourself. It's tough when, uh, when you know, that it wasn't part of the plan, but you get too far into a project yeah. where there's really no... Like they have big equipment in there, digging out crawl spaces, digging out, yeah. you know, all there's this really stuff. There's really no return. And so yeah. your only path forward is to take the tree out. That was a that But was a you know loss. what? Um, they can try to get something larger from like Nathan, yeah. Malad, like what we did. Mm -hmm. My only suggestion is do it early in the season when it's not leafed out. Yeah. Yes. For sure. Or late. I guess you could probably do it like late in the fall. You would want to go now. Pick it out just so you can see if how much of yeah, it's looking right. really healthy and really good. Pick out the best branched one and then mark it and have them. We have a lot of issues with uh, like getting things that have leaves on them and like if you don't cover them on the freeway well, from there to like here, our jake load yeah that was not covered evergreens are fine because well i they think don't they get even the sustain burn. some burn you think so mm -hmm. yeah they yeah, might be right mm -hmm. but they'll be fine <laughs> they'll be fine they're in the yeah. ground they'll, the delivery was not expensive i they should have like to deliver a tiered delivery a tiered system, delivery system. <laughs> yeah i just assumed that it was you know they knew the distance and they've delivered to us before yeah what they should do is they should have a delivery where it's like if we don't need to go on the freeway then you know you can go 40 miles an hour mm -hmm. to your house then it's fine but mm -hmm. which we've done remember yeah, the rural right. yeah. the rural raindrops crab apple we took all the back roads and i was driving i think right 
And I was trying to be so careful because I didn't want to lose any of the leaves. I yeah. wanted to see what it looked like. Would it take us like two hours to get home? I don't know. And it's normally like a 45 minute drive. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a nice drive. Okay. Uh, Martha Rice said, such pretty plants. Love that purple. I have a second story butterfly bush that's pretty woody. How far back can I prune this and should I wait till spring? I would probably wait until spring. Wait until it leaves out. Now you could go one of two ways on that. You could do a kind of a rejuvenation prune and hack the crap out of it and just cut it way back. Um, and usually if it's a nice established plant, it should leaf out and produce new stems for you. You kind of almost start over with it. Um, that is risky though. Like. Don't take my advice and then get mad if it dies. It is risky to do rejuvenation pruning. But if you're at a point with a plant where you can't really enjoy it anymore, you're really not out much to take it down and try otherwise. And then you could replace it with something else if it doesn't work. Or you could just be a little bit more tender about it. Um, and you can prune quite a lot of it. I, without seeing a picture, it'd be kind of hard to say. But mm -hmm. um, if you've got a really woody network of, of huge branches below and you're a little nervous about getting into that super thick wood, I mean, take it down as far as you can to that point after it starts to leaf out in the, the spring. They usually recommend that you wait until it leaves out so you can see where the strong leaf buds are and you usually take it back to the first set of strong leaf buds, even if you're cutting off some other leaf buds that look a little weaker. Uh, Blake Cooper said, I planted lo and behold purple haze budley as this, uh, this spring is quart-sized plants. I'm planning on just letting them do their thing now and we'll trim them and shape them next spring. Is that a good idea? That is a great idea. That's how it should be done. Lynette said, I'm kind of expecting to see a truckload of big rocks and tree stumps enter your <laughs> landscape since the pond project. Is this a possibility? I think rocks are a possibility. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Not stumps. No, not stumps. I think the stumps that they put in the pond are fine. There's three of them. There's three stumps yeah. and one long log. Yeah. Uh, and those are fine. I think we'll get rid of one of the stumps. The one that's making the, one the that, yeah. water all orange, the tannins, which I don't really mind all that much. I mean, it'd be nice to have a little bit clearer. They say it's better for the koi. Yeah. I don't know. I still, I would rather have a clear pond though. Sure. Because sure. They, they've got those little like rock clefts that they can, you know, be yeah. under like the. And that massive lily. Yeah. Like, growing like a weed in there, which is awesome. And we'll have more shade growing soon, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> in like five years. Yeah. M Gaming Channel said the air makes you inhale a lot of fertilizer power, powder. Is that fine? They probably recommend on the bag that you wear yeah. a mask. Um, I usually dump it in and then I wait for the biggest part of the cloud to leave before yeah, I get down there. When you're outside, that stuff dissipates like really quickly and you don't get your head like, like right, right up in it. Yeah. I mean, it's probably not ideal, right? I don't think it's a big deal, but honestly. I usually wait till the biggest cloud of it is gone. Like, yeah, don't let it poof up in your face. Yeah. Over and over. Uh, Christy Frank said, how can I get my butterfly bushes to be more rounded? They're le tall and leggy and have to be staked or they fall over. Again, that's a pruning thing. Um, you just have to prune them in the spring after they start to leaf out. Okay, next video was shopping for garden things with mom on a 108 degree day. So that was the hottest day of our summer. Um, I think hopefully that was it of the hundreds. Have you looked at the forecast? Oh yeah, nice. Okay, so Monday and Tuesday are 97 and 96, but then we're back, which 96 to 81. We're gonna have wind yeah. next, next Tuesday night. But then it's down in the low 80s. That's awesome. That means boxwood trimming season is upon us. I love it. Okay, Lisa said, what was the name of the plant that you got so excited about when you were filming yourself? Sounded like Jacopa, a uh, Chitalpa. It's one that we planted in our garden this year. They're new for next year, but this garden center had some. So I was very surprised that they did because I usually don't see those things show up for a it's year or two. It's new for next year? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Were they sent samples mm, or something? Let me double check. It's gotta be available this year. Chitalpa, El Nino. I just might be, remember. No, next year. I wonder if they were like sent samples. I don't know, but they had... A lot of people are sent samples. It's not like yeah. we're the only oh, no. ones that no, get we are not. stuff for the next yeah. year. Um, anyway, I was surprised to see them. And they are But they beautiful. shouldn't be selling them, right? If they were oh, samples? I don't know. I have no idea. Huh. I didn't look for a price tag works. either. Maybe that said sample. But I don't know. The other thing I've noticed is that a lot of plants that say they're available for next year or in garden centers next year, you can buy them from provenwinners.com. Oh, and try like them out Like this year, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. Well, we do have three of them planted in our garden and they've put on growth. They're doing beautifully out there. Patty Westridge said, I love these moments you share with your mom. Is that blue plant you bought also known as lungwort? It is not. So plumbago, I guess there's a, uh, like a tropical type of plumbago, which is completely different than the hardy plumbago that we got. Um, so I learned something new. Hmm. Uh, 
after that. Anyway, the lungwort is also known as pulmonaria and it's more of a shade loving plant and they bloom earlier in the season, like late spring. Um, same kind of blue, usually they have blue and pink blooms on the plant. We've planted a couple of different vari varieties, the spot on and pink -a blue and they do great in our landscape. But they are shade loving, plumbago wants more sun. Plumbago has a different leaf too, smaller, green, mm. turns red in the fall. St. Letha said the audacity of someone just eating the strawberries off of a plant they don't own. Who, what does the garden center do in those situations? Make the customer buy the plant? Seems only fair. I shared in that video, I don't, I don't even know if you reviewed that video. No, I didn't. I usually, if there's anybody accompanying me in a video, I make sure I am the one who reviews it because I will cut out anything that they might not see as a right. flattering shot or whatever. So I really scrutinize the video so that everybody's happy. Um, Anyway, I shared the story about how there was, when we have fruit trees or plants down at the garden center, if we have them long enough, you get to see the fruit start to, mm -hmm. you know, everybody talks about it because, you know, we get excited about stuff like that. Everybody talks about the strawberry plants that are about ready to, uh, they're almost ripe, about ready to eat. And Monica said she watched as a customer rolled up to one of the plants that everybody had been talking about and ate every single strawberry off of the plant. Just stood Whoa. there and ate them and then walked off. And Monica was like... You know what though? Some <gasps> people like just have no social awareness. Some people have no filter. Like those people just exist in society. <laughs> they exist among us. <laughs> they do. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do. They're no. just like, there's just. And it's not worth it yeah. to, you know, like you have to buy this now. Yeah. Cause you ate the reason why we could sell it at this point right. of the year, you know? Um, yeah. So don't, don't do that. Not that you guys would, but probably don't unless you're seriously like 99% sure you're going to buy that thing but you just want to make sure the flavor is good that would be the only case where i'd say go ahead and try one yeah and then you know what yeah the video blessed my heart would your mom tell us what kind of flowers she thinks they use to make the butterfly on your drive-by they bloom tightly for the curve so i would imagine some sort of annual anyone know so yeah you can see in this picture here uh beyond like the border of flowers down in the lawn they had planted a butterfly shaped flower bed mm. and i we think it's like a very compact variety of marigold that's what it looks like to us um but that little spot is so neat my mom took my dad out there on a drive because she was just like, oh my goodness. You know, you could stumble upon these like little gems out there. Uh, it's a really fun area to drive around in that Do you valley. remember <clears throat> several years ago, uh, Bonide reached out to us oh, yeah. and asked if we wanted to <laughs> plant their logo <laughs> in flowers. And like, I ran the numbers, uh -huh. on, you know, and I think we just determined that it like, wasn't worth the amount of effort that it would take. Or the stress to get the plants to the point where they look amazing all at the same time. Yeah, and, and I think all they the have weather a lot of blue have. in their logo too, which I think would be difficult, yeah. you know, in the summer to get, you know, a vibrant blue color. Mm -hmm. But maybe they don't have blue. I'm not sure. But either way, it was like we're trying to figure out what varieties of things to where they don't like overtake the other one because you mm -hmm. have to have very like defined lines. Yeah. That'd be really difficult to do. It really would. And we have no experience with no. that. <laughs> But they wanted it done on like an acre. <laughs> that was been... before we had developed much of the South Garden. I don't so, think we had developed any of it. So we we considered it because yeah. we were like, well, we could do it, I guess, for one year. But that would be a lot of, of whew, I can't even imagine now. Yeah. Uh, Paula said, is your parents' remodel completed? No. So it took forever and ever and ever because the contractor they are using is actually the guy that we had come look at our house mm -hmm. like a year ago. Um, and he is going to probably help us renovate ours once we get all of our ducks in a row. Um, so my mom and dad are using him, but he's from Idaho and had to get an Oregon license and it took forever to get the Oregon license. So. It's like that with everybody. Like <gasps> very few people get an Oregon license. Because Oregon it's just is not a worth pain. it. Yeah, yeah Oregon's a pain with. to work with. It and takes Idaho's forever. not, by contrast. Yeah. Everything's a little more lax. Mm -hmm. When were they supposed to start that project? Like it was... June or May or? Yeah. Something, it was like, or maybe it was April. It was April, I think. And they didn't start until. But he just couldn't start without beginning the Beginning of August, right. Yeah, he just had to wait on it. Anyway, so they're way behind where they thought they would be at this point. But he says that it should be done before Thanksgiving. There's no way. Aaron, Aaron doubts it, but. He's got, just, he's got people rolling though. Everybody's yeah. been just like, I like him and he's, yeah. he seems good, Yeah. but you know, stuff like the tree, you know, stuff gets you behind where you're like, we didn't intend on this. So now you got to call a tree guy and cut down the tree. And then you got to call a guy to grind the stump out. And 
before you know it, you're like, that's just one thing that happened and, and now you're a week behind. In the behind. meantime, one of the subcontractors had to go work on something else yeah. to fill in the time and now they need to finish that. I don't blame, I don't blame contractors. It's a, it's a tough thing because yeah. there's so many things that just pop up out of nowhere mm-hmm. and they want to stay busy. They don't want to yeah. just be like waiting a week, right. you know, just like, well, I can't go work because the tree you know, needs to come out. The tree needs to come out. <laughs> right. like, they're going to go start the next job. Right. And that might mean it's going to go a few days late. Samantha said, how awesome that your mom is your best friend and you share the same love of gardening, shopping, antiquing, and eating. Uh, so priceless. Looked like a very fun day. It really was a fun day. Uh, Aaron, what would you do on a fun day out on your own? On my own? Like on your very own. I, there aren't, like locally, there aren't that many things that I really like to do, but I like to travel. And like, if I could just pick a, like it took us a day and a half basically to do this. But this last fall, I took my dad and brother to a Vikings game. Mm-hmm. in Minneapolis and that's the kind of thing that I would do like even if it was a short trip because like it's a from Boise it's a non-stop flight mm-hmm. so it's not hard it only takes like two hours two and a half hours or whatever so like it was literally like a day and a half mm-hmm. to just fly over there go to the game come back mm-hmm. that's the kind of stuff that I would do yeah it's a little more than a day but on your own okay on my own I don't really love to do stuff on my own mm-hmm. like go out and do stuff I would prefer there's people around mm-hmm. is that that's not weird right no I think you're social per- social person yeah yeah if I was just on my own I like just chill at home probably like watch a movie I know I was gonna say like I know you didn't ask me this question but if I had a day on my own I would want everybody to leave the house yeah and I would want to be at the house all by myself right that never ever happens for me ever it's tough with the kids now because you have to like if you're gonna take them mm-hmm somewhere like especially because we've been for the last like five years we've had nap times yeah so you and they don't sleep that great other places Mm -mm. so that's why we don't do that yeah we protect the nap time and i think our kids are better for it yeah benjamin though there was a a moment like a year there where we didn't have nap time nap times Mm -hmm. because benjamin stopped napping it too he was never really a great napper even up until then and he doesn't need it he does not get um fussy or no or short or anything when he's tired when he's tired he gets gets, a little silly he gets silly but not not like fussy like most kids they start acting out and getting a bad attitude and things he's not like that at all he's a joy to be around all the time samantha uh, requires sleep mm-hmm. and she'll sleep for three, three and a half hours every single day. Sometimes more. Sometimes mm-hmm. we have to go wake her up because it's like, it's six o'clock. Yeah. We need to wake her up because one, we want to eat dinner and two, we don't want to be up until midnight. Um, our kids go to bed fairly late, they do. like around 10, mm-hmm. but they also can sleep as long as they want, as long as they want. So mm-hmm. it's not like they're, yeah, it doesn't really matter. No. I don't think. No, our days are just kind of shifted because we naturally like last night. I think I was in bed at one thirty, one thirty-two ish. Yeah, probably. it's like a lot of my nights. So my day naturally starts a little bit later. I hate that part though because I love to be up early. I love mm-hmm. it. I love the days where I wake up naturally on like on my yeah. own early and I feel good and I want to get out of bed and I just feel like I have so much a day. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would prefer that every day, but I'm also a night owl too because I think that's when I get my my time. Like you just need to get the time. like the siesta figured out. Yeah, because then you the day could when do both. Yeah, yeah, when it's really hot, just like if you could just do like an hour nap and then I can't boom. nap though, you guys. I'm just not a nap taker. I never have been. I'd have to be sick to nap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm always really happy when you do take a nap though. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. <laughs> She's finally asleep. <laughs> yeah. And then the kids want to like, I'm gonna go find mom. I'm like, you don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare She's go sleeping. find her. <laughs> Um, RGW said, did your dad see the sign at 507? It says, we do not offer a warranty due to the personal care required after purchase. Good for My them. My people. They should say that everywhere, at every garden center. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, next video is working around the pond, planting the plumbago that I picked up on the shopping trip. Uh, we had our new chairs delivered that we ordered from Country Casual Teak. And then I got into the pond and groomed all the pond plants. Fully clothed. I was fully clothed. Yeah, how come you didn't have your bathing suit on? Oh my gosh. Jeez. I never dreamed I would trigger so many comments <laughs> about clothes. I saved that project till the end of the day. I wore my dirty jeans from the day before because I knew like, well, I'm going to tackle this project, so I'll just get right in and then I can get out and change. It was great. You didn't have to wash them. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Never did I imagine I would trigger so many comments about wearing clothes into the pond. Yeah. Amy Deed said, love the morning light of this video, so peaceful. Is the bottom of the pond very rocky? Do you need to wear shoes when you're in it? The chairs are so pretty. Um, 
Yes, the pond, it is rocky. It is rocky, but it's like smooth rock. It's not like... Yeah. But I just wear... And I think people are worried that I'm wearing Birkenstocks into the pond. These are knockoff Birkenstocks. I don't buy... The real ones I actually don't really like. These are a different brand off of Amazon that costs like $30, and I like them better. Um, so I don't mind getting into the pond every once in a while. My pair is getting kind of raggedy anyway. I need to order, order a new pair. If I have to order a couple new pair every year, still less money than buying a pair of real Birkenstocks. Boom. Boom. Anne said, could you explain the sizing on t-shirts? I assume they are unisex, so is a large for a medium-sized man. I need a women's large. They're, um, these are the new ones from Ken, correct? Yes, Ken and his wife Natalie are like doing this whole merch mm -hmm. thing for us. Um, so I wear in our new shirts a medium, just to give you guys an idea. I'm I not like a small person, so, and Ken I'm not- Ken was saying he was gonna put a sizing chart oh, on, really? the, on the website. So but you guys see how my size, Yeah. you see what size I am and I'm wearing a medium. So you're a medium. How tall are you? Five, five four. Four? Ish. Five, three. No, yeah, three and three quarters. <laughs> okay. Is that with <laughs> shoes? No. No. <laughs> Barefoot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. GS uh, said, of course I love the pond lore, but my question is, have you named the koi and hyphen? I have 10 koi all named. I'm looking forward to what you and your family choose for names. I think we need to get to know the koi a little bit better. Um, they're getting a little less skittish. Like they'll, they'll be closer to the edge now, but I guess it takes a little while to kind of form that bond bond or comfort level. So the fish will come up and eat from you. I think once that happens, we'll be more ready, I guess. Mm -hmm to name them. I don't know if we'll ever name them. I have four chickens. One of them has a legit name, Bev. The other three, I can't really, maybe at this point I could tell them apart. We named them at one point, mm -hmm. but I really can't remember all of those. Adana said, all, of all your new bench placements, where do you end up sitting the most in the evenings? Do you have a spot that's a personal favorite? Well, right now we sit in those two Adirondack chairs every night. The and kid, the kids bound off the rocks. They do. They just crawl on the rocks. They run around. They have balls out there and they go and I won't let them play with balls around the pond though. So they have to go into the driveway. It's just right there, that mm -hmm. gravel area right behind us. They have a big time. Mm -hmm. So they're just running around and then occasionally we'll hear them like up by the house and you yeah. know, um, and Aaron and I just sit there and relax and we do sit in the benches, uh, out in the cut flower, cut garden. flower garden. Now, yeah, though. we do. Cause we'll, we walk often yes every there. night yep we and, walk um, and then we end up at the pond <laughs> yeah and that's kind of how it goes yeah but it's like a nice little reprieve you can kind of sit in the cut flower garden mm -hmm. for you know five minutes and then move on i yeah. love that about benches in the garden because mm -hmm. as you're strolling through you need a place to just kind of like observe for a little while yeah so you don't feel like you need to be you know to keep walking the well, whole time. Well, you're less likely to enjoy and stay. Stay and yeah. enjoy parts of your garden. And we are discussing our garden a lot in the evenings. And sometimes you want to just sit there and look at it and talk about options and like Yeah, stay. like the last thing we were discussing was doing like a big pergola over the over the grass part of the cut flower garden. The runs. Whoops, the runs. Yeah. Not the middle circle, but the runs. Yeah, going the middle to circle would be open. Yeah. So it'd be kind of like With a with a water like feature a cross. in the center. No, it'd be, be like a, a plus. plus sign. A plus yeah. Sign. Uh huh. Uh, but then we decided it probably would be too chunky. And it would take away from the flower shed. It'd be too big of a structure, and the flower shed is kind of the shining star out there. And I love that shed. But a big pergola would make it to where you could have a bunch of hanging baskets. Oh joy! That's what I need in my life. You yeah. I do not like hanging baskets. I'm just not a fan. I do, however. I have one from Kinsman. Mm -hmm. It's that like the I planted yeah, like it. Gothic kind yeah, of I planted it a few times in videos, but it's probably been years. Um, but it's got a really neat shape to it. Mm -hmm. If the hanging basket itself looks like a piece of beautiful garden statuary, I love it. I do like hanging baskets in like commercial applications. Mm -hmm. Like in downtown city areas, yeah. that looks really good. I like those. When yeah. they're like watered well. And yeah. I, I, I like when they have like sweet potato vine mm -hmm. where they trail mm -hmm. down a long ways. I think that looks cool. But yeah, for gardens, it, it is true. It Like for us, it seems like it blocks the view of mm -hmm. wherever you're wanting to look. Also, we don't have areas where it makes sense. And I think that that's probably the biggest reason. Yeah. There's really no area where... It's like that needs to have a hanging. I'm, I don't know. I'm a little bit um, a proponent of clean views, mm -hmm. um, not having too much cluttering up your space. Um, and we are like huge proponents of making everything automated. And hanging baskets are difficult to automate. I mean, sure. you, can, you can run drip, you know, like if you're hanging them off a porch. Mm -hmm. 
But, you know, then you've got exposed drip lines that you can kind of see. Mm-hmm. Um, That's the only way I would have them now. Yeah. If I had them. Yeah. Uh, Julie said, so pretty. Have I missed the $2,500 giveaway from the furniture company? Mm, yes, you have. Who it, won it? Um, um, Melissa and Teresa oh. were the winners. Nice. And they've got their emails, and um, Stephanie from Country Casual Teak sent out the, the gift cards. Oh, were they and, excited? Yeah, one of them was like, uh, I could tell she was a little... Like, are like, you a scammer? Yeah, skittish. <laughs> Good for her, though. She was like responding yeah. to my emails, but, you know, with not like... Uh, some people will email, and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I won. This is so awesome. Like, they believe it. Uh-huh. Other people are like, you know, thanks. Here's my info, you know. Mm-hmm. And then after she realized it was real, she was like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> but I can totally understand, you mm-hmm. know, the skittishness and then uh we picked four winners for the bulbs mm-hmm. for color blends, color blends yeah. so if anybody's wondering the way that you find it is go back to that video it's in the description mm-hmm. so if your youtube handle is in the description then you won very fun bonnie said did i miss night footage when the lights were on the pond i've been dying to see what it looks like in the evening with the lights on i don't think we've actually showed it i did put a little instagram and facebook reel up um the kids were out there kind of playing we we're kind of waiting until the patio area is done yeah <laughs> and we thought that pedro was going to start on that this last week and it was on monday when we had the deluge of rain so he's going to be starting this next monday all the pavers are here we're ready to go on the project so kind of wanted to wait till that was buttoned up flagstone i don't know why or did i say pavers yeah flagstone Marcella said, do you plan to do a winterizing video? I moved to the Northwest Montana, moved to Northwest Montana last year, zone 4B, and have not started any projects because I don't know how to protect my watering systems in the winter. The only thing we do is we have our sprinkler system blown out. Mm -hmm. Um, Drip lines we don't do anything with because the water just goes out of those naturally. But yeah, we just blow out our system. Yeah. That's pretty much it for winterizing. I mean, we move in certain things if they're, sometimes, we move in things that are tender and potted. We'll move them into... A, you could do a garage or a greenhouse um to protect like if you have any concrete or terracotta mm-hmm. you'll probably want to bring that in if if you terracotta for sure yeah um i actually experienced my first terracotta break this last year mm. i've just been gardening leaving it out and gardening with terracotta for years and have never had one break but it was right below the flower shed and i got all of the where we don't have rain gutters on the flower shed mm-hmm. i just got everything and it, i don't know the freeze took that one out, but um, a lot of people will wrap their stuff too, like mm-hmm. wrap their concrete. We don't wrap ours because our winter season is so long that we want to be able to see the ornaments that are out in the garden and enjoy them for the five months that yeah. we'd have to have in them a, wrapped. In a 4B, it, I guess it depends on how much wind you get, but I know like sometimes you have to wrap like evergreens. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're way colder than us. If so. you, I mean, I think that's only if you get a lot of wind. Sure. If like on a, Mackinac, they wrap yeah. theirs. Mm-hmm. With because burlap, right? there's probably a lot of like misty wind too. Mm-hmm. It's probably like cool from the lake. Sure. Seems like an ocean. It's so big. Yes, I know. My goodness. Um, we've done videos in the past on overwintering. Like, well, like perennials and containers and things, right? Yeah. We haven't done like a overwintering as a whole. You know, talking about all the different things outside. Might be something worth doing. Chris said, do you know if Plamego will overwinter in your area? I have one for the first time in Central Texas, Zone 8A, and I'm hearing it isn't dependable as a perennial here. Depends, I guess, on what type of Plumbago you have. The hardy Plumbago is a Zone 5 through 9, so if that's the one you have, you should be good. If it's the tropical type, I'm not so sure. Laurel Stoneman said, is the water lily fertilizer safe for fish? Yes, it is. Can you explain, is it more of a natural fertilizer? Um, it's the one that Greg brought with the water lilies, and we fertilized when he was here. And then I just figured it was time to get in there and do it again. I talked to him yesterday. He said he thinks that you could probably double or triple the amount of fertilizer that you put in. He oh. watched the video. Oh, did he? I was being very uh, cautious with it yeah. because just starting out, I don't want to go like too much. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. He said double or triple. Yeah. What you I think he's going to be back here this next month. Yeah. Yeah. Next video was cut flower garden tour. So many pretty things. I just wanted to get out and show you how things were doing. There's some empty rows. There's some things that need to be cut back or taken out. Uh, but there's also a lot of beautiful things and I wanted to talk through our thrip control out there. I have to tell you what, like this year, I think I've enjoyed our garden more Mm -hmm. than other years. I don't know if it's because we're kind of buttoning up some of the bigger stuff. Also having, I don't know, a, a chance to experiment with beneficial insects and kind of, I don't know, seeing the population of pollinators grow. It's making me feel really like good about our space. I don't know what it is. Um, 
Yeah. Okay, Megan said, what do you use to write on your tags? I use just a regular Sharpie and then the sun bleaches it out. We have a garden marker is what it's called. Um, DP Industries garden marker. These are awesome. I get these at my parents' garden center. You can get them at probably at a lot of different garden centers, garden supply. Um, they, they do wear off, but not like a Sharpie. They last a lot longer. Usually you'll get a full season out of them. Raquel said, how do you trim a honeysuckle? Oh, I usually just trim honeysuckles to shape, but I do need to trim back that one. I keep saying it every year by the Leyland Cypress. I need to cut that one back hard and do a rejuvenation prune. I don't think there's a whole lot you can do wrong with honeysuckles. I think the best time, and I'm just verifying to prune them properly, is right after they're done flowering. Yeah, on Proven Winners website, on the Sensation, which is the one I have on the orchard fence out there, it says pruning is usually not needed, but maybe trimmed after flowering. Erica said, Laura, would you consider trying your hand growing rose trees? Oh, like doing it myself. Maybe. Should we do some rose trees, Erin? Mm, that's just not, I don't see you doing that. Maybe, maybe not. Unless you just got a wild hair and then, then we'd do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lori said, Rudbeckia versus Echinacea. Pros, cons, better, best varieties. Why one over the other? Both are also amazing. They really are. Now, Echinacea are all perennial for us here. Rudbeckia, there's a lot of different varieties. Some are perennial and some are not. Um, so the one row I have out there that's like very prolific and, and blooming beautifully, those are all tender varieties. So some years they might come back, some most years they won't. Um, so it's nice that there's the variations in colors and structure though. So I like to grow those as well as Echinacea and Rudbeckias. I do have some perennial Rudbeckias in the perennial section. And then I've added the, the purple cone flowers, which we started from seed this year as well in the perennial section. So I, it just kind of depends on what you're after and if you want something to come back from year to year or if you want to be able to change up the variety that you grow from year to year. Um, they're all amazing flowers though. And then Angie said, isn't Rudbeckia perennial? I was surprised to see it planted in the annual bed. Yep. So like I said, some of the Rudbeckia are, are just tender perennials. So I just kind of plan on them being tender perennials because I think I would end up having to replace most of them if they were in the perennial section. And the last video from this past week was a plant present for Erin's mom. It was her birthday, so we went down to the garden center. I had a good time just like walking around thinking of Sue, his mom's name is Sue, thinking of Sue and um, thinking of some of the plants that she might like in a container. She likes to garden and has a real pretty garden, so that was fun. Um, and then we, what did else did we do? Oh, we trimmed the Lonicero topiaries in the Hartley. It was a really nice hour we spent out there doing that. And then uh, we baked some pumpkin bread using the wheat that we grew and milled, all of that. Uh, and it turned out, oh, I've made, I think, four or five loaves of that. I think I'm gonna make another one today. I think I'm gonna make them in muffin shapes today instead. I think that would be nice. I think some one of you guys, and maybe it's in here, I'm gonna scour the comment section because one of you guys um, shared a streusel topping that you can put on top of your pumpkin bread. It's like brown sugar and nuts and something else in mm -hmm. there, butter. So, oh yeah, make it even better, like take it over the edge of awesomeness. Um, Garden Makeover said, did she love it? It turned out beautiful, thank you. She did love it. She actually sent me a couple pictures of it on the patio and she put it right where I thought she might. Hmm. I didn't even say where I was thinking she might put it. I just said, I think it's going to want like a little morning sun, but mostly protection in the afternoon. And then she sent me pictures the next day saying how much she enjoyed it and wishing her a happy birthday. I love pumpkin bread. I must've missed it. Is the recipe good for store-bought flour? Yes. I'm just the way said, are the tea in the recipe teaspoons or tablespoons? I couldn't figure it out from watching the video. Little teas or teaspoons, big teas or tablespoons. I learned that in home ec. They still had home ec when I was in middle school. Do they not do it anymore? I don't know if they do, but they had a huge room and um, they had little kitchens mm -hmm. in the home ec room. And so you had like a partner, we had to make cream puffs and uh, we had to sew, we did, we learned about like some economic stuff. We watched uh, Diane Keaton's Baby Boom, how she started the applesauce company, yeah. like from the ground up. And um, we did some other things, I don't know, it was fun. But yeah, little teas or teaspoons, big teas or tablespoons. Jeanette said, could you bring that beautiful planter inside for the winter? Uh, you know, those plants really do need a dormant period, at least the, the hookah is a semi-evergreen. Brunnera kind of goes away in the winter time. The fern would look okay. I don't know, I wouldn't. They all are plants that kind of want to be outside. Uh, Karen said, what are the odds of both your moms being named Susan? Oh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Must have been a popular name at that time. They're relatively similar in the age, like maybe a couple years apart. Yeah. 
but within yeah. five probably but your mom susan goes by sue my mm-hmm. mom susan goes by susan my mom's always been like a long name sort right. of you use the long name like my brother's name is joe i call him joe she calls him joseph It'd be weird to call my mom Susan, and it'd be weird to call your mom Sue. Yeah, like your mom is a Sue. Mm-hmm. My mom is a Susan. Right. It's weird. It is weird. It feels like a different name to me. Yeah. And Baller said, can you grow wheat in pots? There's no reason why you couldn't. That'd be pretty, actually. Yeah. It's kind of a nice idea. Maybe you start some in the spring, and like, these are going to be my fall pots. And you leave a little space, and you can tuck in some annuals, and like have the wheat be your centerpiece. Uh, baby angel said, do you ever wake up and just want a la- want a lazy day where you don't want to do any gardening for the day? Yes. You kind of did that, uh, on the rainy day on Monday. I did. I was working. Like, I filmed a video. I filmed in the Hartley. Oh yeah. So I worked. I did. But did I, you I'll... want to not work though? No, because in the end, I don't feel good about days where I just laze around. Yeah. I, I like productive days. I feel way better at the end of a productive day. I feel happier. Mm-hmm. Um, so largely, I would say I like, it doesn't have to be gardening, though, but anything productive. If I spend a day like cleaning out closets and organizing stuff or whatever, mm-hmm. like stuff that like advances where you're at, like makes your life easier from the moment you started till the when you finish, like it's better by the time you ended. Does that make sense? Yeah. I like, I like that. Uh, Joyce has said, do you, does your own homegrown and milled flour taste any different from store-bought? A little bit. It's got a little bit of a different, it's like a whole wheat flour. Um, it definitely sifted is the way to go uh, with that. So I'm actually, I'm going to make some banana bread today too. Maybe I'll make banana bread instead of pumpkin bread today with it. Mm. Anyway. I've got bananas in the perfect state of ripeness. Anyway, yeah, there is a tiny bit of a different, it's just very fresh and it tastes good. Last question, Barbara said, great mix of projects today. Would you consider using your own pumpkins and eggs for the recipe? Yes, all you need is a cow. and <laughs> You can make the whole recipe from homegrown ingredients and cow is maybe in the near future. We shall see. Oh geez, we'll see. I was thinking about that though. As I, as I was opening the canned pumpkin, I thought, oh, if I would have just waited or could wait until fall. We do have some sugar pie pumpkins growing out there um, and some good squash, like sweet meat is a really good one to use in place of canned pumpkin in these recipes. I thought, oh, that would be perfect to be able to gather up like as many homegrown ingredients as we could. Mm-hmm. We'll be able to here shortly. Our vine crops are doing really well. And you guys, that is it for today's recap video. Remember, our merch store will be linked down below 20% off of our shirts and hoodies for 48 hours. No code necessary. No code. Yes. Uh, we're, oh. we're about ready to switch things over. So like the store looks, it's like very bare bones and the website is just... We almost didn't say anything about it because we're like just like... nothing so, there because yeah. we're about ready to switch it over. It's going to look way better here soon. We'll let you know when it happens. Yeah. But... It's going to be awesome. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hope you're having a great start to your week, and we will see you in the next one.